Most lawn enthusiasts know that after you seed new grass, whether it be a small spot, a large spot, or an entire lawn, it's pretty good to put mesotrion down on the spot at time of seeding or at seedling emergence to stop the weeds from growing up in your new lawn space. The majority of grass types can handle mesotrion without any problems. Some will experience some bleaching, and there's a handful out there that the product will kill off as well. But as you see behind me on that little patch back there, uh, just before the hill starts going up, I've got a mixture of perennial rye, Kentucky bluegrass, and buffalo grass in that small little spot. All of those grass types can take mesotrion. And unless you're putting down a granular product like the, uh, the Scott's starter fertilizer that includes mesotrion, most of it gets put into a tank sprayer and you spray it on. So of course, if you're actually going to go through the trouble of mixing up a tank and applying a spray product to new baby grass, you might as well throw some extra cool stuff in there, things that are going to make that grass perform better over time. I'm going to show you what I'm doing right now. This particular patch is approximately 100 square feet, maybe a little tiny bit more depending on how much you measure up the hill. I over prepared the seed bed I made an entire video about it which i'll link to down in the description below i over prepared it so that i could get extreme root development into this pad but because i dug so much material out i actually woke up a lot of dormant weed seeds as you look down you'll see lots of grass now the majority of the tall grass is perennial rye and then you see way down low there's some smaller bunches i'm going to guess that that's kentucky bluegrass it's hard to tell when it's this young uh, it also could be buffalo grass. Buffalo grass and Kentucky bluegrass are probably going to be germinating around day 10. This is day 11 or 12 or something like that. So most of this is perennial rye that you're seeing. Except for all of these little sprouts of weeds. There's tons of them, little babies. Now some people go ahead and they put down mesotrion at time of seeding. These days I tend to wait to see what kind of weed pressure I have. Over there I seeded a patch where I haven't actually had to apply mesotrion at all. Only a few weeds came up over there and I was able to hand pluck them. Over here though we've got a lot. There's just lots and lots of baby weeds. Now I'm going to be applying tenacity to knock these things out. You could use the generic mesotrion product which I'll link to down in the description below which tends to be slightly cheaper. Or you could go ahead, if you hadn't put down a starter fertilizer, you could go ahead and put down that Scott's built for seeding starter fertilizer stuff uh, that includes mesotrion in it. The point here is when these weeds are this young, they will be killed off by the mesotrion. But if you wait for them to generate like uh, secondary, third, fourth sets of leaves as those weeds mature, then you're going to end up having to apply mesotrion a couple times. This young, I think I can knock them all out right off the bat and then stave off any new infestations of weeds over the next three weeks. All right, so if you've ever used Tenacity before or the generic mesotrion product, you know that you water it in. It goes into the soil and it's soil mobile for a handful of weeks. If we wait to use it as a post-emergent, as I'm doing in my case right here, it can be watered in also because it will also get taken up by the, uh, the root systems of the weeds. So since we're going to be watering it in, I'm going to put just enough tenacity into my Posen sprayer. And I'm going to throw some other things in that are also soil mobile, uptaken by the grass root systems for the benefit of the eventual lawn. None of these products are fertilizers because all of my spots have starter fertilizer on it already. If I'm going to spray, I might as well spray a bunch of stuff. So what I do is I take a little bit of soluble mycorrhiza, which I already have in my sprayer here. I want these young seed plots, uh, these new lawn spaces, uh, to have every chance possible to thrive for years and years to come. So if I can develop a nice mycorrhizal network uh, underground, then that's going to help all of the grass perform exceptionally well forever. More of a short-term benefit, I'm going to be throwing in some Cytogrow. This is a concentrated solution of cytokinins, which is basically a plant growth hormone. We don't really talk about it as a, as a plant growth regulator, but it kind of is. It really pushes a lot of that energy into root development when it gets uptaken by the grass. Now, again, Cytogrow can be absorbed foliarly, or it can go into the soil and be taken up by the root system. 
another reason to throw that into the sprayer because I got to still keep this stuff moist. The seed back there is only a couple weeks old, or I should say the baby grass is only a couple weeks old. Lastly, I'm going to put in some silica. Silica is something that helps your grass uh, stay a little bit more rigid and upright. And it gives it a little bit more tolerance to wear and tear. I've never applied silica before, and I can't compare this to any other product. So this is basically my maiden voyage. But all of this stuff can go in the sprayer at the same time, and I can douse all of my new baby grass spots. Now, I'm not going to go up the hill where I have straw down on the ground. I'm going to do a second application in a few weeks where I can take that straw off and apply it everywhere. This is after five days. Put seed down five days ago. Already coming in. Now in standard spray tanks, you're going to be mixing all of these products together into gallons of water normally. But because I'm using a hose-in sprayer, a lot of the water is shot through and infused into the mixture. So you don't actually need quite as much water. We're actually applying quite a bit of water to the ground with the small amount that's actually in the sprayer tank. It's also worth noting that all of these products can be applied roughly every three weeks if you really want to get the most bang for your buck, the most out of them. And with tenacity, I don't necessarily want to apply it every three weeks. I'd rather just put it down one time and just be done with it. But if after 18, 19, 20 days, I still think that I have some weed pressure, I can load the exact same mixture right back into the hose and sprayer and spray all three products one more time. And that's probably what I'm going to have to do here. Typically, the weeds that Tenacity is hitting are going to slowly turn white over the next 7 to 10 days. And by the time day 15 to 20 rolls around, many of those weeds will die, especially the really, really young ones. Now, if you're applying Tenacity or some other Mesotrion product to new grass seed or new grass sprouts, the next main thing has to do with the mowing frequency. Or when do you start mowing? Now, I have an entire video about that, which I've got linked right up here in the corner. If you are new to growing grass from seed, then make sure to watch that next. And of course, I have other seeding lawn or seeding grass space videos linked down in the description below for your convenience. 